It may go without saying that Jurassic Park, the original movie, is actually my favorite movie ever. It is such a brilliant piece of cinematic, just awesomeness. Not just because it has dinosaurs, although that, that certainly helps, but it is just a great movie in general, as is the novel it's based on. But, as many have pointed out many, many times, Jurassic Park is full of many paleontological inaccuracies, some of which are due to misunderstandings that simply existed at the time of the film's conception, but others were known and just ignored, or omitted, or whatever it may be. So I decided to make a list, going through the dinosaurs that appear in the film, from least to most accurate. Now, admittedly, there are many dinosaurs here that are difficult to nail down in terms of complete accuracy. Even the most accurate, I would argue, has its problems, but we have to give some leeway in terms of, well, entertainment value that a movie has to shoot for, as well as new discoveries that have been found since the film was made, thus changing our understanding of these animals. I have two rules when it comes to this list. For one thing, I'm just talking about the original film. If this goes well, I will make a sequel, going over the Lost World, then three, and then the rest of the series as a whole. For now, we're just gonna stick with the dinosaurs that appeared in the first Jurassic Park film. Following up, I'm not gonna mention the feather issue. Everyone brings up the stupid feathers every single time there's any kind of Jurassic Park artwork or Jurassic Park trailer. There's someone in the Facebook comments or the YouTube comments or wherever it is, someone's in the comments like, where are the feathers? For the love of all that is holy, stop bringing up the stupid feathers. Because, A, not every dinosaur had feathers. I don't know why we have to keep going over this. Many did. That's true. Absolutely. Without question. But they didn't know that when Jurassic Park was filmed. And, 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 not all of them did. And for two, there are plenty of other inaccuracies to focus on. That, again, have nothing to do with the blasted feathers. That with many of these probably wouldn't have even been there in the original animal anyway. Stop bringing up the feathers. You're not smarter than everybody else because you think you know everything. Y you don't. Stop talking about them. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm over the feathers. I'm so over the feathers, you guys. In any event, these are the dinosaurs from the original Jurassic Park ranked from least to most accurate. The Velociraptors. Yeah, see, this is probably a, a really easy one to, uh, <laughs> to talk about. Uh, this is the one that gets brought up the most. Probably because they are one of the most famous dinosaurs from the films. They appear in every single one of them. But also, they are the least accurate by a significant margin across the whole, purely because of the name. Honestly, if they were named, say, Deinonychus or Utah Raptor, which to be fair wasn't actually scientifically analyzed when the film was made, so we can't really bring that up, but also Achillobator, there are animals in the paleontological record that can stand in for this animal, yet they called it Velociraptor. And the major issue is down to the size. In the film, they stand up to two meters tall, six feet, but in real life, they were only a half a meter, one and a half feet. They were tiny, chicken-sized, little itty-bitty baby dromaeosaurs, not at all the relatively large, fierce predators we see. I mean, don't get me wrong, Velociraptors would have been pretty fierce, but they were not nearly large enough to adequately solo a human being. And that's not the only issue with their particular portrayal. Again, I'm ignoring the feathers, but yes, Velociraptors probably did have feathers, though that's a problem, but also, there's significant shrink wrapping on their designs, which is a common issue when it comes to dinosaur reconstructions in general, so we can kind of ignore that, but also the pronated wrists on the raptors are pretty terrible. Their wrists just weren't angled this way at all. They were probably more like a bird's wrists. And their intelligence is, well, disputed. The larger dromaeosaurs probably were fairly smart. The smaller velociraptors may not have been so. But then again, in terms of the Jurassic Park velociraptors, I generally just think of them as a Utah raptor anyway, because they're far more in line with that animal, purely based off of the size, as well as the location of the remains. Velociraptor just isn't an appropriate name for them. It's just not the same species at all. So why was it called that? Well, that's Michael Crichton's fault, or, well, partially his fault. It also has to do with Gregory S. Paul, who authored a book called Predatory Dinosaurs of the World. In that book, he actually used the name 
Velociraptor Enteropus to describe Deinonychus Enteropus. While this was obviously wrong, Crichton found the name Velociraptor a lot more dramatic, so he utilized it in the book, and it has carried over to the movie, even though it's it's wrong. It, it's just not. And honestly, their portrayal in the movie is too large even for Deinonychus. Again, they're closer to Utah Raptor. Though, again, that animal hadn't been described at the time of the film, so we can't really bring that up, but we can point out that even at the time, this animal's just, just wrong. And it's a big feature in the film. One of the major antagonists carried through the series as a whole. I don't think there's a single piece of Jurassic Park media that doesn't have at least a mention of these things, let alone a full tilt appearance. And yet, it's wrong. It's hideously wrong. The wrongest out of all of them, which is why we're starting here. But it's only uphill moving forward, so that's something. Dilophosaurus. Ah, uh, yes. Some may argue this is even more inaccurate than Velociraptor in terms of Jurassic Park, though I resist that for a few reasons. For one thing, looking at it, the Dilophosaur featured in the movie does have the double head crest, and despite having the hideously pronated wrists again, is relatively accurate to the overall design of Dilophosaurus with the exception of again the size. This animal is much too small. A full-grown Dilophosaur would be quite a bit bigger, taller than an average person, actually. So why so short? Well, actually, fans of Jurassic Park have come up with an explanation for this discrepancy, since for a long time this was the only scene where a Dilophosaur was featured, and the explanation is simply that this is a juvenile. Hence why they're hesitant to attack, and seemingly more curious about Nedry, rather than outright killing him. And you know, that's a perfectly serviceable explanation for the size discrepancy, so I'm gonna give it a pass on that. What I can't give it a pass for is the frill, or the venom spit, which is probably one of the more distinctive traits in the Jurassic Park franchise, to the point that this element of the animal has been carried over to other media. People just think of Dilophosaurs and think of that venom thing, but there's no basis in the paleontological record for it. They just straight up didn't have a frill, and that wasn't even in the book. Spielberg added that because he thought it would look cool. And as for the venom spit, there's just no basis for it. Though, to be fair, one could argue that dinosaurs were pretty varied and maybe there was one that did have a venom element. It's not impossible, sure, but it does seem like an odd thing to throw in there. Though again, in Crichton's defense, it was introduced to show that there's a lot we just don't know about dinosaurs, and they didn't realize until they cloned them, showing how difficult it can be to control nature. So it's a good writing element, but it is not something that can be supported with any scientific evidence. Despite this, Dilophosaurus, in their Jurassic Park form, has become a very popular dinosaur. So hey, it can't really come down on them too hard, I suppose. It was a cool scene. Let's be honest. And Nedry asked for it. This whole park would have been fine, but no. No, you had to ruin everything. Newman. Brachiosaurus. We're getting into the more middle of the road in terms of accuracy here. The Brachiosaurus in Jurassic Park isn't too wrong, though it is still wrong in some elements. It's actually the first dinosaur we see in the film which is a good choice for an introduction. After all, Brachiosaurus was incredibly large and impressive. This majestic scene introduced us to this magical island where dinosaurs roam the earth again. It was a great, phenomenal set piece, and the Brachiosaurus served its purpose to welcome the visitors and the audience to this place. But it's not completely scientifically accurate, though for the time, it isn't super wrong. There's two major issues with the overall Brachy's design here. The neck is probably too far up. It's believed that they probably would have held their necks out at a bit of a different angle, 45 to 60 degrees, rather than straight up as it's portrayed here. Additionally, and we get a closer look during the second time they appear, Jurassic Park Brachiosaurs have the old-style depiction of their nostrils being on the tops of their heads. This is a remnant back when it was thought 
that these large animals spent most of their time in the water. But it's just wrong. They didn't spend most of their time in the water, for one thing. And secondly, their nostrils would be on the front of their nose, like they're supposed to be. But this element remained with the animals, even into Jurassic Park, where they're portrayed in a much more appropriate way, being terrestrial herbivores. There's also one thing the Brachiosaur does here that was done for dramatic effect, but probably would have been physically impossible. Rearing. The Brachiosaurus was so tall, it likely never needed to rear, and even if it wanted to, its back legs probably couldn't support its immense weight without the aid of the front legs. While this particular scene is of course phenomenal, it's likely not something the actual animal ever would have been capable of. But still, it is a beautiful scene, and I do love Brachiosaurs. This scene made many fans of Brachiosaurus across the world, so again, I'm not coming down on this at all. I, I love this movie, I, I don't know if I made that clear, it's my favorite. So like, none of this list is me coming down on Jurassic Park. It's just pointing out things that are wrong. Gallimimus. We're getting into the more accurate side of things, and it's hard to judge Gallimimus in the film, because we don't see it very much, and when we do, it's very fast which admittedly is actually very appropriate. These speedy ornithopods is actually believed to be one of the largest, scientifically speaking. Adults would be about six meters long, and they were believed to be pretty quick, so the scene of a herd of them running in unison is actually pretty in line with what paleontologists actually thought. They do have pronated wrists, which is wrong, but I all have that, so yeah. And there is one other issue with the Gallimimus that doesn't necessarily crop up in the original Jurassic Park, but I'm going to bring it up now because it shows up occasionally in the media for some reason. I don't know why this keeps happening, and I will never understand this, but throughout Jurassic Park, as a franchise, occasionally Gallimimus are portrayed with teeth. Gallimimus don't have any teeth. That's one of their defining characteristics, actually. It's a big difference from other theropods in general. Small heads and no teeth. But sometimes in the media, they are portrayed with teeth. Now, I don't think the original models did that. So there's no points off for the original Jurassic Park in this regard. And honestly, even if there are teeth in those models, I can't see any, can you? But it is something that sometimes just is thrown into modern models of these animals, and I just don't know why. It's one of their defining characteristics. Just don't put any teeth in their mouths. How hard is that to do? But yeah, outside of the pronated wrists, the galleys get a pretty solid pass from me. Triceratops. Ah, now we're into really good stuff. Triceratops was famous even before Jurassic Park, and it certainly helped. Interestingly, in the book, this scene with the sick animal was actually a Stegosaurus, but for the movie, they made it a Triceratops. Why, I don't know, but hey, whatever. And honestly, there isn't too much to say against the design of Triceratops in this particular scene. It's actually a pretty good rendition to what paleontologists actually thought. I've actually looked online to try to figure out if anyone else sees anything wrong about this animal. And I've only noticed two elements that some people point out. Some say there's too many spikes on the frill. And that may be true. Though it is hard to count exactly in the scene. And someone else says, those piles of poop are too big. And look guys, if we're getting down... <laughs> I'm sorry. If we're getting to the point of arguing that the piles of feces are too large for an animal in the movie, I, I think we're nitpicking. I really think we're going a little too far with it. I, I, I think we could leave that alone, you know? And, and let that one be. I, I just don't feel like it's necessary. The Triceratops was handled really well, all things considered, especially by Jurassic Park standards. Definitely one of the more accurate animals in the entire series as a whole. Parasolophilus. This one's near the top, but only because, um, we don't see it very much. As some of you are watching this like, wait, there are Parasolophilus in the original Jurassic Park? And yes, but they appear very, very briefly. It's in the first Brachiosaurus scene when they look over the field, and yes, indeed, there are Parasolophilus at the watering hole with the Brachiosaurus. In terms of their accuracy, it's kind of hard to tell, because we don't get a very good look at them. But based off of general information and what we can glean from this scene, though limited it may be, it's pretty spot for what paleontologists would have thought. So I can't knock it. 
Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, wait a minute. You're probably gonna come down on me and be like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, prehistory in the dark. Darkness the curse. How dare you put T-Rex number one? It's full of inaccuracies. But I would resist that because based off of what was thought at the time, the Rex is fairly accurate, actually. The pronated wrists are wrong, but this is one of the least shrink-wrapped dinosaurs in the entire film franchise. It has a very robust head, and it's not in a tripod stance. The Rex, I think, is very important to get the general public to better understand theropods in general, because it was one of the first times where one was portrayed on the big screen where they weren't in that stupid, dumpy-looking tripod stance. The Rex was balanced on two legs with a large tail and a big head. This is pretty spot, actually. I did hear one paleontologist point out that the rough, pebbly skin probably should be smaller. There should be smaller pebbles on the skin, but, I mean, that's a minor issue. And there is still the theory that they would have had lips, not with the exposed teeth, but that's still debated on. Based off of what we knew from the time, this is actually a pretty accurate rendition of the Rex. Yeah, it's got a big dramatic roar, and the whole can't see you if you don't move thing might be a bit of a problem, and by might I mean definitely is a bit of a problem. They could definitely see you if you didn't move, I mean that's, that's just absurd. But the Rex's animalistic approach to things, this methodical examining of its surroundings, the unknown elements, a prehistoric animal brought millions of years into the future, it's handled extremely well, so I tend to give it a pass on some of the more minor inaccuracies because I think the Rex, more than any other animal, probably made it clear to more modern audiences what dinosaurs really were, how fast they were, how intelligent. This isn't just a movie monster here, this is a real thinking, breathing animal, and it was portrayed that way in the scene. And yes, I know, Rex probably wasn't fast enough to catch up to a jeep, but to be fair, at the time, they did think that might be possible. It was still debated, and in fact, Rex's exact speed is still kind of contested, it depends on who you ask. And don't you dare bring up feathers here, because adult Rexes didn't have those. Your feathers have no power here, get out! Leave me and my Tyrannosaurus alone. I admit, I really did dispute myself even putting it number one, because technically speaking, Triceratops the Parasolophilus probably more accurate, but with how prominently the Rex was shown in the franchise as a whole, you'd actually expect more inaccuracies, but you don't really see that with them. They're always portrayed as a smart, thoughtful, yet ferocious predators they really were. And for that, you gotta commend Jurassic Park for such a mature, modern take on this famous animal, and definitely handled way better than the raptors. I think we can agree there, everything was handled better than the raptors. Those aren't velociraptors, they just aren't! And with that, a special thank you, because that's of all my apex predators, Arthur Roy and Metal for Life guy, till next time. This is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.